Okay, hi. Uh, it's Monday morning, 11 o'clock here on the East Coast. I wanted to just do a quick video to wrap up last week and to introduce week 11 of the course. Uh, Two-thirds down, right? Um, let's see. Again, great discussions. I really appreciate the time and thought you're all putting into your initial post and your uh, responses to your uh, student and your fellow students. Um, you know, in this course, I have that uh, third, you know, discussion form that's unmarked. Uh, it's to give people a platform to think more, talk more about the issues. But frankly, uh, I'm not disappointed really that it isn't being used because um, the depth and breadth of our discussions in the marked two discussion forms have been so good. So, uh, you know, wonderful and uh Kudos, I guess, is the word uh, to all of you. Um, okay, so a review of last week is simply um, uh, starts and ends with a quick discussion of present value and net present value. And the whole uh, point here is that when you think about your capital investments and where you're going to put your money, you need to think about uh, the value of your money today versus the net uh, inflow of money in the future and the value of those dollars. And we know that the value of the future dollars is not as great as the value of the dollars today, and so we have to discount the value of those future dollars in order to make sure that when we compare outlays today to future inflows of money, net inflows of money, we're really comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to say there um, about the assignment, uh, and I'll digress here for a second. Um, I got a, some questions about the assignment on Friday uh, from a student, and I didn't answer you till this morning. The uh, not very good, much help to you. So, um, if you want to go back in the message section, uh, read my answers to your three questions. If that changes how you would do the assignment, uh, please just resubmit and I'll uh, look at your later version. Okay, But the point of the assignment is really pretty simple. I want to just make sure that you understand the concept of present value and net present value and have an understanding of how um, you actually calculate present value versus your um, net uh, future flow of dollars in it. Or, uh, net present value, right? I um, hope I said that clearly. Um, but in our discussions, it came out that when you are calculating net present value, uh, a key there are two uh, keys to it, and one is uh, the discount rate that you actually use to, uh, by which you discount the net flow of future dollars into your organization. And um, normally uh, we think about the inflation rate, and that is typically what is used as uh, the discount rate for nonprofits. Um, but as Catherine pointed out, um, there are other ways of deciding what your discount rate should be. And in particular, in the for-profit world, uh, they, look at, they look a lot more at the opportunity cost of putting your dollars uh, in a capital investment versus, you know, investing that money in the stock market or in bonds or hedge funds or whatever. And that's because uh, in for-profit world, right, our goal is to maximize profit. And, and so therefore, a business is all about how can I get the maximum return on my money, not necessarily where should I put my money to get the maximum uh, uh, benefit for the public, i.e., how do I maximize uh, my mission? And so, um, a little difference there in terms of in the nonprofit world, we typically use the rate of inflation, versus in the for profit world, we look more at the opportunity cost of uh, making the capital investment as a basis for setting the discount rate. And then, just the second. I uh, hope that was clear. The, the second point I wanted to make is that um, you should appreciate that the examples that were uh, 
looking at in the assignment example are uh, simplifications of um, the, maybe the bigger or the big picture, so to speak. Uh, and by that I mean um, we talked about in the uh, assignment, you know, we talk about the initial uh, capital outlay of the building and then in subsequent years the cost of the equipment and we compare that to the uh, gross uh, increase in revenues and then net that just a little bit by the $200 cost, I guess, um, for the procedure. And um, I guess all I wanted to say there is that there are probably, under those big ins and outs of money, there's probably a lot of little uh, flows of money in and out. In other words, um, when you when you think about uh, the actual profit or surplus from doing each procedure, um, we talked about the assignment gives you an understanding that the revenue is X uh, minus those $200 uh, for increased costs somewhere, but um, maybe uh, you have to pay your doctors more because they're doing more. Maybe there are more um, Maybe your insurance costs go up because you're actually having more surgeries done. Um, and um, Mary Lou, in one of her posts, talks about uh, the uh, should she sell her rental property now or later, and she thought about it only in terms of the actual sale price and the present value of uh, the, a future sale price versus uh, a price you might get today. But, and, and that in terms of magnitude, right, is, is what you should be thinking about. But below that, there are probably other considerations, uh, such as, um, let's see here. Oh, I only had it in my brain. Um, <laughs> such as, um, well, um, between now and when you sell the property, do you expect to have any major expenditures uh, for upkeep of the property? Um, do you have to put on a new roof? Um, is the furnace about to give out? Um, are you really going to have to redo the driveway? Um, you know, any major uh, outlays of money really have to be considered when you're doing um, net value net present value calculation of today's purchase price versus or, or selling price versus the future selling price okay but hopefully um, again by stripping down these um, problems or examples you get to understand the concept e more easily and also how you do the calculations okay so I think we're we're done there, and so the, the week coming forward is how do you manage risk? And I think up to this point in the course, right, I've been, it, it's been designed, frankly, to make you cautious about how you manage your money as a nonprofit. We start with looking at liquidity and making sure that you always have money to um, weather the financial storm and to take it, uh, and to benefit from, what, what's the word I'm looking for here, and so that you can pursue um, opportunities without first going to a funder. Uh, so we take a fairly conservative view, or uh, cautious view, of how you should manage your money so that your organization is always financially sustainable. And so we talk about that in terms of cash flow, we talk about that in terms of budgeting, we talk about that in terms of capital. But um, of course, you never want to go broke, and you want to always uh, have the best resources possible to fund your operations so that you can maximize your mission. Um, so again, I've been fairly conservative and cautionary in how the course is laid out. But um, the other thing you need to know, right, and you know this in your real life, is that uh, you can't grow you can't um, expand your asset base, uh, acquire more things, 
uh, without taking some risk, right? And that ha that includes borrowing risk, uh, that includes investment risk, and so this week we talk a little bit about well, uh, how do we manage risk prudently, knowing that uh, you can't always escape it, or you can't escape it, um, but you want to just make smart, informed decisions, right, with your money. And so, let's see here. Um, so that leads us then to uh, the notion, right, that all assets are funded by either debt or profits. Uh, it takes us back to the notion that it takes money to make money. And uh, then we talk about how to assess risk and how to limit risk. And um, let's see, risk can come in the forms of theft within your organization because you don't have good enough procedures on how uh, financial decisions are made and the expenditure of money is recorded and tracked, right? Uh, so there's a little section on that in this week's readings. Uh, but more importantly, well not more importantly, but uh, more common, let's say, is you know making sure that your uh, information about future decisions and future conditions are accurate. And so um, we have a little bit of discussion about regression analysis um, as a means of trying to understand future events better uh, and how to position your organization given uh, the uncertainty about future events. And lastly, uh, there's a section on quick analysis. Now, I'll just say that in another course similar to this that I created that only had eight-week sessions, um, quick analysis was actually uh, the prime topic for one of the weeks. Um, I didn't do that in this course because uh, the concept itself is, well, there's a lot of reading that goes along with it. Um, and it's kind of hard to understand, and I wasn't sure it really fit in perfectly to this course. But uh, having said that, um, in the supplementary readings or recommended readings, there are some, there's a long section on quick analysis with um, the original text from a book written in the 80s that now is out of print. And why have I included all of that stuff? Uh, simply because I found in my professional career, um, that uh, the simple notion of thinking about, uh, you know, the bird in the hand is worth two in the bush um, has really come in handy for me in thinking about risk in the future. And not to say that I always took the bird in the hand, uh, but rather um, when I thought about uh, the risky proposition, which had a very good outcome, the home run, or the worst outcome, striking out and losing the game, um, it helped me to figure out, well, do I really want to go for broke with the risk, or do I just want to um, stay in the game and take the intermediate uh, okay, but sure bet? And I don't know if that's a, a good way to introduce the topic or not, but um, anyway, it's there for you to read and to delve into, and this is probably a good... Um, topic for the third open forum uh, if people want to discuss this more. Okay, um, and then at the very end of the um, of the lesson and I think, right, uh, the assignment this week, there's just a little uh, review of cash management again and the notion of do I pay uh, the bill early and get a discount off the price or do I um, forego the discount, hold on to my cash longer, keep it in the bank making interest, and pay the bill on the very last day possible without incurring a penalty. Okay? All right, so 14 minutes, enough. I um, hope that was helpful, and um, I don't know, I'll see you online. Okay? And again, if you want to call at any time, uh, periodically I get a call from one or another of you. Uh, Particularly if you have sent me a message and I haven't responded, please give a call.
Okay. All right. As it so happened, uh, this weekend I was in Colorado and Colorado Springs at a wedding from Wednesday through uh, late last night. So in part, uh, that's why I didn't see the uh, message. But um, no excuse, just uh, the reality, okay? But do call anytime. All right? Okay. Thanks, and um, see you online.